Let me give you a reality check. 50% of the nations of this world doesn't have a rule of law. There is no transparency. There is no good governance. There is no respect to human rights. There is no independent courts. There is no free press. There is no private property. There is not many things. How are these tied many, to the environment? Many, very important enabling conditions. Unless we come to realize that we need to heavily invest in the transition towards the good governance models, we will be bulldozer, bulldozed by climate change and the loss of biodiversity. Uh, climate change, I, I'm very concerned that, you know, there's a lot of um, civil unrest because of what I just mentioned. And climate change will just basically add more fuel to that uh, social unrest. And this is just going to dramatically increase in the next one to two years. It's not just the well-educated kids from the north that are doing strikes because of climate change. It's way more serious than that, and it's gonna happen heavily in those uh, countries that are trapped, within this social environment trap, whereby the lack of governance will uh, be kind of the detonator of our conflicts. And, and, and that is a reality. In, in my case, I come from a country that uh, when my grandfather was born in 1898, Costa Rica was probably the, uh, the, most, uh, the less developed uh, nation in the Western Hemisphere, and today Costa Rica lives uh, longer than the average American, lives happier than any American, with a smaller, way, way smaller environmental footprint. And that has been basically because my country has been investing in all those items I just mentioned before, and I can, you know, add one more for which has been key to us that was when we abolished the army. 70 years ago, we abolished the army in Costa Rica. We heavily invested in education and healthcare. And all of a sudden, you know, people come to realize that uh, nature is part of our development agenda. Costa Rica has been able to go 100% renewable energies, has doubled the size of our forests at the same time that our economy triple and, and the population. You, have you brought citizens along with that? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, in, in, in Costa Rica, uh, it makes economic sense to protect nature. As a matter of fact, we have uh, a decarbonization plan that aims to be zero emission by 2050, where we plan to be 60% forest cover in Costa Rica. Today, we are 52, and we've been restored at uh, degraded lands coming, bringing nature once more, and that is becoming, giving us a high possibility to be more climate resilient in, in water, particularly in, in the water sector, in the energy sectors. Uh, but at the same time, we've been able to create national mechanisms where protecting nature makes a lot of sense. Every, we got a, by the way, we got a carbon tax in Costa Rica. It is not like the northern concept where you put a tax so people will be more efficient in how they use fossil fuels. No, in Costa Rica, we got what I call a tropical carbon tax, where it deals with the market failure uh, uh, of the positive externality. So those who are providing a carbon fixation service by keeping forests and planting trees are fully compensated for that carbon offset by those who consume fossil fuels. We, got, we have created a very positive incentive for nature conservation. If, if the payment for carbon matches the cost of opportunity of doing the wrong irrational agricultural livestock activities we want to avoid, people will protect forests. Uh, and this is what we have done in Costa Rica. It makes a lot of economic sense. So the good governance, the dealing with the market failures, which was very well mentioned by Diane here, are two of the things that has really worked very well in Costa Rica.